the Navy hymn. Our service begins at the bottom of page three in your green service bulletin. Blessed be the one holy and living God. And please join me in the call of purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading, our lesson, and the response. Job receives an answer from God in response to his repeated pleadings and complaints about his misfortunes. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out in the, of the whirlwind, Who is that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your ions like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where we were, you when I laid on the foundation of the earth. Tell me, if you have any understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Who or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us join in reading portions of Psalm 104 found on page 4 of your bulletin. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourself with light as a, with a coat and spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations so that she never shall move at any time. You covered it with the deep as a mantle. The water stood higher than the mountains. As you rebuked, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up the hills and down to the valleys, yeah. to the places you had appointed for them. You set the limits they should not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Hallelujah. I would like to introduce to everybody this morning John Holsack. John is the wonderful husband of Wiley. They are the wonderful parents of Josie and Lily, our lectors this morning, who are wonderful members of our youth group. And as a family, they are important parts of the Ohana of St. Christopher's. Good morning, and thank you, Preston, for your kind words. Uh, as Preston mentioned, uh, my name is John Holzak, and my family and I, we, we have been members of St. Christopher's now for about 10 years, and I was just asked to share a few words with you this morning, and so um, I think two words that will be said a lot uh, is going to be sharing and smiling, so I hope you're all smiling out there. Mm -hmm. I know at church today there is a lot of support and the support comes in, in many ways. Um, certainly 10 years ago Jovan first came to St. Christopher's and we felt it was a real beginning for not only our family for, for St. Christopher's and Jovan and over the years we've been able to see her grow as a great leader. Uh, she is always led with uh, an open door and an open heart. And we have shared many wonderful times here at St. Christopher's. We've been involved in our family camp. Um, we've been asked to be involved in Family Promise. Wiley has made lasagnas for <laughs> families. Um, and certainly, um, having Lily and Josephine be able to be a part of the Sunday service has certainly made both Wiley and I very, very proud. Um, and we've also been very blessed in the past few years uh, with some wonderful Southern hospitality and the arrival of Preston and Marianne here to join us here at St. Christopher's. I'll let everybody know out there, um, know that St. Christopher's is doing wonderfully well. Their foundation is strong. Uh, Preston and Mother Jovan uh, have just been sharing all their love, um, their spiritual guidance with uh, the community here in Kailua and all around. Um, so thank you so much for uh, being here, Preston, Marianne, Mother Javon. And, um, you know, remember, let's, uh, let's not forget, let's keep smiling, knowing that St. Christopher's is doing well. We, if you don't know, 
we have just celebrated 75 wonderful years in Kailua. And it is a real wonderful goal, a time to celebrate, and we have many, many things to be thankful for. Um, I would like to just share a couple things that why I love and support St. Christopher's. Um, certainly it's the, the gift of uh, the music that Ina has brought to our church. Um, I love that she is sharing her talent with the youth here. And I would like to say that uh, certainly Megan has just done a wonderful, wonderful job, and it's just really terrific to just see all the kids um, out there with their musical talents. And uh, it's a real joy, so I'm sure everybody even out there that are not able to come here personally are uh, experiencing that as well. Uh, I'd also like to just say that Eric Mueller has been just a a wonderful inspiration to me, uh, especially on our uh, campus cleaning days, uh, our work days. He comes out here with wonderful leadership and uh, again, a big smile. And to let those know that don't know, we have just done a wonderful job on the campus with the grounds, but also painted the choir room and the church and grounds look fantastic. So when you all come back and visit, uh, you will see that. And a neat story that was shared to me a few months ago was that uh, a mom here, when she was a young girl, was also um, cleaning the beds and making the flowers look great here. And it was just wonderful to think that years later, here she was back again uh, nurturing and being a part of all that wonderful energy. And I can only hope that uh, my girls will one day maybe come back and uh, have that same sort of story. So, um, so in closing, I just want to say that, um, you know, church is all about sharing. And you share uh, where you can in your talents. Uh, sometimes um, it can be, of course, financially. And... The church, just to let you know, uh, is doing wonderful. Um, Preston has led our youth group, and of course that is a place that touches my heart, but I'm sure the hearts of many uh, parents, grandparents, um, that are and have been a part of St. Christopher's for years. So Preston and Marianne, I can only say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all that you're doing. It's just been wonderful. Um, certainly uh, Larry and Mary Ellis uh, with the video that has been going on and certainly Wiley has uh, taken part in that too to reach out to everybody out there in our community. Um, it's just uh, really, it's wonderful to be a part of St. Christopher's and um, we all thank you for all your support, and uh, God bless you, and God bless your families.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. One of the most wonderful things about having Preston here, it's just great to have a partner. And uh, Marianne also, she walked over to me. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, it's great is that I get to sing in the choir a whole bunch, which is really nice. And Mar uh, Marianne walked over to me in the choir and she pointed to the gospel like, aren't you supposed to be up there saying that? And I was like, no. Nah. Preston, we already agreed, Preston was going to read the gospel today. It's just really wonderful to have Preston as a partner. It's wonderful for Tom and me to have partners in ministry. Uh, so wonderful that we went out to Nico's last night to celebrate. The four of us did. So um, that was wonderful. I know that... Um, that Preston in his message last week in the e-blast, he said, P.S., ask me about the um, eye of the needle and about tithing. How many people asked you about that? Oh, zero? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, they already know. You already know the answer then. Um, uh, I'm going to just show you, you won't be able to see from where you are, I think, but this is sort of a cartoon that's on the color, on the pages in the back where the youth a lot of times sit and do their coloring. And it's a man walking around with ton, his house, pictures, uh, his guitar, golf clubs, etc. And it says, one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions, says Jesus. And the man is going after holding all of these things. He says, it doesn't. <laughs> so going through the eye of the needle last week had something to do with that topic because it, uh, the scripture read, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. And supposedly, the eye of the needle was a little door by which you could enter into the holy city of Jerusalem at one of the many gates. 
and that was a little door. And if your camel had a whole bunch of your beloved treasures on it, then you were never going to be able to get your camel through that gate either. So that was another portion of that message, that uh, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. That's just food for thought. But this week's scripture, this is taking place when we are steps from Jesus's destiny in Jerusalem. And Jesus has told his disciples three times about what awaits him in Jerusalem. And they're still sort of la-di-da in the moment and not really thinking about that. Um, And they're still sort of grabbing for the gold, wanting to sit at his left hand, wanting to sit at his right hand. You know, it's often interesting how human beings can hear a message and they can indicate that they understand and get it. And then they'll do something that shows that they do not get it. I actually learned that partly through French. Uh, Every now and then I would be in a conversation and I'd be smiling or I'd laugh. And my best friend who was French, who taught me most of the French I know, she says, I don't think you understand what's going on or you would not be smiling and nodding your head. But it is so often that we think we understand, even in English, but we don't really get it. So here we have in scripture, James and John, Boanerges, which means the sons of thunder. They were two of the most um, prominent of the disciples, and they're pitching for top spots in Jesus's cabinet. And they don't really seem to get that the path of discipleship is not gonna be about grasping for that brass ring but rather it's fraught with a bitter cup and a difficult baptism. So we understand, we think we understand, and we think we get it, but then we miss the point. So I do have a story. It's not at all about this uh, church. I'm sure you'll be able to tell after I tell you the story. So in the Sunday church announcements, Uh, The pastor said that there would be a meeting of the board after the service, and this one guy showed up, and he wasn't on the board. And so a person on the board said, why are you here? Uh, You're not a member of the board. He says, oh, well, after the sermon, um, I was about as bored as anybody else there, so I thought that it was for me. I was supposed to show up just like the rest of you. We can often think we accept and understand the message, but somehow not get it. And even the disciples did that. And maybe it was in the message. Maybe Jesus could have put together a more effective sound bite than, hey, follow me and I'll make you drink a bitter cup. But then maybe not, maybe it is better, maybe refreshing even, to meet an honest politician or an honest son of God. And by the way, James is the one disciple, I don't think I really knew this until I got my first Episcopal Church position at St. James, but he is the one disciple whose death is recorded in the Bible in the 12th chapter of Acts. King Herod has him killed with the, with the sword. And so he did, early on, drink from a bitter cup. And we hear that most of the disciples lost their lives spreading the good news about Jesus. Long before the Acts of the Apostles even made it to the bestseller list, They were spreading the good news and even losing their lives for it. Jesus says, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a bond servant of all. 
You heard the scripture just before, and uh, I think we do need to unpack it a little bit. I did not use the word slave, which the scripture does. We don't like the language of being a servant. We even like it less when it talks about being a slave. That's one reason why I translated it as a bond servant. We have become socially aware of the class and privilege problems of servants and masters and the long and problematic history of the United States and slavery makes that word slave very hard to deal with as well. But think for a, member, a minute what Jesus is saying. He's not talking about a world according to Caesar where he's boss and everybody else is slave to the boss. He's not talking about a crude hierarchy. Leadership in the kingdom of God includes taking on roles of service and servanthood rather than taking on roles of privilege and power. The Greek meaning of slave or bond servant in this text is meant also to convey a sense of humility and freely given service to one another. And that is what Jesus is talking about. And I can tell you this, the subversive power of such a community drove Caesar and Herod and other rulers like them almost mad. And that's why Jesus and his disciples sometimes found themselves drinking from a bitter cup. James and John, they heard Jesus, but they didn't get Jesus. And Jesus chooses every one of us, even James and John, even you, me, uh, even though we are not a final finished product because we all are disciples of Jesus. We're all members of one body and the body needs every finger, toe, hair on the head, every one of us has a role to play in the body of Christ. And as John was saying, and thank you, John, uh, this is a pretty exciting discipleship community. We do a lot of outreach. We've been slowed down in our outreach a little bit by COVID, but still we managed to make food for Family Promise families who are temporarily houseless. We used to have them here living with us for a week, four times a year, but we're still making food for them. Um, we have slowed down our activity with Institute for Human Services, but nonetheless, we are still an outreach community, reaching out to one another, reaching out to our Lord, reaching out to those in the community and beyond who are in need. And you'll hear some more about that also next week. The invitation is open to you. Drink the cup, live the baptism of discipleship. And St. Christopher's, believe me, has a job for every one of you, no matter what. And don't think, oh my gosh, I just better just stop coming to church right now because I'm not sure I really want to be like pointed out and picked to like, you be in charge of this. Whatever your gifts are and however you feel is God is calling you to serve. That's what I'm talking about. So what do you want to bring of yourself in humble service to St. Christopher's, to Christ, to the church, to the world, and beyond even. We are not finished products yet. None of us as individuals, our church is not a finished product yet. But we are all disciples of Christ, and that at its heart is what matters. Amen. And I invite you to stand and take your books of common prayer and go to, to the very back of your book of common prayer. 
uh, you, the back cover, you'll see an ecumenical version of the Nicene Creed. to do is ask Chelsea. She'll make it miraculously appear in the back of your book of common prayer. So join me, please, in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people. We are invited to serve the needs of all, but we require God's assistance. Let us turn our hearts to God, asking for help in our need, saying, Lord, have mercy. That leaders of the church will freely serve the faithful without preference to rank or authority. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that among the peoples of the world, service will take precedence over authority. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. That the many peoples of the world will serve the needs of others and will comfort the anxieties of all. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. That the victims of oppression, abuse, or neglect will discover the peace of God through others' assistance prayer and presence, we pray to the Lord. That all who suffer will know the power of God, we pray to the Lord. That the community gathered here will nourish others, sustained by the nourishment of the word and the table of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Rob and Carly Schumacher, Clayton and Mary Smith, Fred and Marilyn Smith, and their Ohana. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Gay, Hank, Draven, Alita, Peter, Jeff, Christy, Cynthia, George, Sarah, Isaiah, Deborah, Mackay, Michelle, Reggie, Mike, James and his parents, and those we name now either silently or aloud. Joey, Emma Gray. We 
We pray for the people of Ethiopia, where a continued armed conflict has resulted in the deaths of thousands and the displacement of more than two million people who have fled their homes. For all those who have died, especially Gail Bennett and Anna Marie Kennedy, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God of justice, Lord of love, send your spirit to dwell within us, sustaining our efforts of service. We ask this in Jesus' name, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Good morning, please be seated. Again, it is wonderful to have all of you here and to be with you this morning. Um, our birthdays and anniversaries. Yesterday was Rachel Muller's 12th oh, yeah. birthday. What, what, what? Oh, yeah. I should probably say yeah. Yesterday was Rachel's birthday. Yesterday was Rachel's birthday. She was 12. Yay, Rachel. Today is Jean Compton's birthday. She's 12, too. No. The 22nd is my dear friend of 30 years, Art Psyche. And the 23rd is Barbara Chang's birthday. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or Thanksgivings anybody would like to bring to our attention? For my aunt's birthday, my cousin's birthday, and my cousin's daughter's birthday, my brother-in-law, so that's Jane, Doug, Lucy, and Eric. And then, um, but wait, there's more. I just wanted to give thanks for John's um, talk this morning. I thought that was very good. And I was smiling the whole time, so thank you. Thank you. Tess? Oh, Tess, come on up here. Come on, come on. Hi, everyone. I'm Tess, and my birthday is Tuesday the 19th, and I'll be 24. Well, congratulations. And I would also like to mention, if you're not doing anything on November 7th, come and see Brandy Baptist. Not the, the 7th, November 7th. November 7th. Anybody else who wants to be baptized? Anybody else who wants to be baptized, let us know. Or 
rebaptize in case you're feeling a little peaked. <laughs> Let us say together the birthday prayer of Thanksgiving that's found in your service bulletin. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrow. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaii. How ole laha now. Aho o my kai. The announcements are in the yellow insert in your service bulletin and contain the daily um, things that are happening here at St. Christopher's. I would like to bring to your attention some of those that are more macro in nature. Our pledge campaign for, 20, for the 2022 budget kicks off today. You will be receiving uh, in the mail this week your letters from uh, Javon and me, and they will have inside in it a blue pledge card. There are also pledge cards in the holders in the pews and an envelope. We would ask, and the vestry joins us in this, please consider prayerfully what you will be able to contribute this year to St. Christopher's. As John mentioned, there are a number of things going on that require all our help in every possible aspect of stewardship to continue. The stewardship campaign will end the Sunday before Thanksgiving, which will be the 21st of November. Was anybody here last year, the Saturday before Halloween? All right, Mary, do you remember what Ina had on? Yes, yes. She was an octopus. And we had five little children, who, were, little girls who were dancing, and they were sea anemones, I think. Or how did that happen? Okay. Okay, our Halloween concert is this coming Saturday, the 23rd, at five o'clock, here at St. Christopher's. You'll have to come to find out what Ina's gonna wear this year. <laughs> or what the Relks will wear in a backwards approach to their costumes. Five o'clock this Sunday, uh, excuse me, next Saturday, the 23rd, here at St. Christopher's. If you need one of these, there are a few of them back there on the table outside the door. Um, please invite neighbors, friends, children, grandchildren. It is a glorious thing. Rumor has it that the rector's gonna be playing a piano piece, complete in her cat costume. But that's a rumor. Which may be a costume enough. Um, the bottom of the first page, the Diocese of Convention is next week. It will be live streamed because of COVID. There is the link if you would like to watch in any way, please feel free to do that. All Saints Sunday, when we remember those who have gone before us and who are deep in our hearts, will be Sunday, November 7th. This coming Sunday, the 24th, we will have a table of remembrance set up at the back so you can bring pictures, or write the names of those you would like to be especially prayed for on All Saints Sunday. And speaking of things there at the back, does everybody see the whiteboard back there? Thank you, Emily, for looking. Okay, the purpose of that, and there will be additional boards as they fill up, is for all of us to write those things for which we are entirely grateful. 
and for which we would like to return gratitude to God. So this morning, the following Sundays, however many times you want, please take a moment and write on those whiteboards those things for which you are grateful. Um, the yard sale is going to be Saturday, November 20th from 8 to noon. It will be out here in our parking lot. The Relks are organizing that. The youth are going to have a table. We're not exactly sure yet what we're going to be having on it, but we're going to be having one. Um, please come, and there are a few more tables that are available for rent. See Joe Relk. Joe, will you raise your hand? See Joe Relk if you've got any questions or would like to participate. Paul. Just a P.S. I have a number of calendars, 2022 calendars that I keep receiving in the mail. They're monthly calendar, I mean, the, you know, turned by the month. Anyway, I placed a bunch back in the back. If you'd like one, please take one. They're free. Every year, St. Christopher's has around $6,000, some years slightly more, some years slightly less, to give to other charitable organizations performing other outreach functions here in Kailua or anywhere. This is what, this yellow bulletin is what the grant request looks like. It's also online at the church website. If there's an organization you would like, the name of which you would like to send to the vestry to have them consider making a contribution to the organization, please complete one of those, one of these forms online or hard copy and get it into uh, Chelsea, the parish administrator. In the past, we've supported Family Promise, IHS, um, some of the organizations, one of them we may be looking at this year is Aloha Diaper Bank. It doesn't make any difference. It can be an international institution. If you have somebody you want the best you to consider supporting, please send it in. You'll notice at the bottom of the second page, the Give Aloha announcement. I'll let y'all read that. Two things. One, thank you so much for your generosity, your, your, your additional generosity to St. Christopher through that program. If you don't, if you made a contribution and haven't yet turned in your receipt from Foodland, please get that into Chelsea. She needs the receipts in order to be sure you receive credit for the gifts. And finally and quickly, Javon and I would like to encourage everybody on your cell phones to add the app for the church directory. You can find it at the church website how to do that. It certainly makes things a lot easier if you're driving down the road and the director says, do you know about someone and then you can find it on your phone and say, I'll find out in just a minute. So, those are our announcements for today. Let us with joy and gladness return to the Lord the gifts of our life and labor. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with St. Christopher, King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home.
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. These are the gifts of God given for us, the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ has died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
e pule kako. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And for the gratitude of service, may you see God in everyone and everything you encounter today. And for the gratitude and service, may you feel the power of the Holy Spirit in, around, and through you. And for the gratitude of service, may you trust that through Jesus you will have eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon and within you now and forever. Amen. Amen.